Hi everybody. I think it's a good time to go ahead and discuss the knead erasers that are such a important part of the five pencil method if you have them. Uh, and uh, it's so good because you can mold it into many different sizes. I have a standard size, a teardrop that I like to use. And uh, we've discussed uh, conditioning them and uh, which ones to use and how uh, a number of times, but years go by. We have new students all the time. I'm glad somebody uh, you know, mentioned it last week and, uh, and said that they were having some difficulty and wondered if they had some solutions. And so I thought we could go ahead and talk about this a little bit and see what we can do to solve some of the problems. Uh, the reflection on here, it isn't great. I usually use general. That's what it's come down to for me. And there are a couple other brands that aren't that bad, uh, but they're probably not always in your art store. Prismacolor is probably the most popular one in the art store, but it is very stiff. I think it's the stiffest out of all of them. And, and especially, I, I sympathize with some of the ladies in my classes uh, locally here that uh, have a hard time, either because of arthritis or, or whatever. Uh, design is also pretty, pretty hard. Uh, and yet, uh, I still have some because periodically I've used different brands just to see what would happen. And, uh, and this is probably a Prismacolor because another thing I want to mention is that even though this is not my choice now, I probably went ahead and made this shape, molded it and everything from quite a number of years ago because they last and last and last. Uh, you might think that because you see all of the dark uh, graphite on it and everything else that it's, it's had it. There's no point in throwing it away because you can recondition it. And reconditioning is, you know, you could try it several different ways, but, but I like to just take this and slowly elongate it. I know it's hard. One of you mentioned that I think the one that asked about uh, the kneaded erasers uh, in the last few days asked about maybe even put water in it. I've had students try everything, put it in the microwave, uh, I've told them just put it under your armpit or hold it in your hand. The you know, problem is you always have something that can transfer onto the uh, onto the rubber. And uh, I had a particular situation where I had a, a just a very talented artist uh, taking my classes years ago, and uh, suddenly she came to me and said, "Daryl, I don't know what's happening, but there's art, there's dark blotches all over my uh, you know drawing." And we finally through you know, the process of elimination found out that she had quite a amount of uh, hand lotion that she was using. I, I think that some of you ladies could probably transfer a few other things like makeup and things, but uh, you want to be careful. Keep your hands clean, just like you would if you're drawing on your paper. And I, I once you finally get this thing to where it's starting to move, you pull it like taffy. There's many different ways you could do this, but I'm just I'm just making a point. So I'm making it a long. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fold it over. I'm going to stretch it again. I'm going to fold it over. I'm going to stretch it again, and I'm going to fold it. Over. Oh, look what's happening! That dark, dark eraser is starting to lighten up. This is pretty neat. So I just have to go ahead and maybe be patient. If you can't, if you don't have the strength. And again, this is probably one of the harder ones because I'm sure this is Prismacolor. And, uh, and they're very stiff. And you can break it apart, you can do whatever you, you know, whatever happens while you're stretching it. But just keep working it and pulling it. What's happening is all of these little uh, parts, I don't know what you want to call it, the fissures or, you know, the little uh, strings and divisions in here that you end up with become very soft because I, I guess it's because they have air in them or something after you you pull it so many times anyway you will find that it gets easier and easier and easier in fact when you end up by getting this softened up stretched out repetitively taking this thing and folding it back over and, and pulling it again you see I took my thumbs and I just pull it apart that way. Sometimes it's probably easier than trying to do this. It will get softer and softer 
and softer. And look what's happening. This is actually turning out lighter than the original product when it came out of the package. That one, this one's quite a bit lighter than that one. Here's design. It could, this could be a design. I don't know. I've, I usually buy a lot of uh, supplies and have them for years. So it takes me sometimes a while to use them or else students end up by benefiting from it. Uh, but anyway, this is getting easier and easier and easier. And you can do this as much as you want. This could be maybe a therapy for you. <laughs> and, uh, and yet I would suggest don't be patient. Don't, I didn't say don't be patient, but don't put a foreign substance in it. Water, you might think that might work. It's a foreign substance in here. And it is going to evaporate at some point. I would think it might even change the structure to where it might be harder to go ahead and work later. Um, but this works very well. And the more often you do it, the less work it is to do it. So you can continue doing this just call it your fun, your exercise, whatever you want to do. And uh, let's see, I sometimes take it around to the class and I'll have them touch this. This is so soft. It's all, you almost can't even hardly feel that, it, that it's there touching your hand. It is just an amazing material if you do this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start deciding, okay, I want to have a shape like that. And so the teardrop is just fantastic. The teardrop, the big end, allows you to tap off areas in, in larger areas, maybe tap off a layer of value across a whole area, or something larger at least than trying to pick out some little detail. But then the other end, this part, will just, you can mold that as pointed as you want and just pick off the graphite, just take it off. And that is really nice because you don't have to disturb any more area around what you're trying to correct or adjust than you have to. So I'm just taking this thing now, making, making it into a ball for the most part. I know where I'm going, so maybe I'm not, not taking it to a ball as much. You, know, you, could, you could go ahead and take this and roll in your hands or roll it on the table or whatever it is. But I want to be able to have that larger end and I want to be able to have the teardrop shape. So I'm just going to take my time and push and mold and, you know, make sure that I've got the little lumps, you know, flattened out or, or absorbed into the main part of the eraser. And, and, uh, and you can get as picky as you want to be. So, what I'm going to do with this end now, I'm going to push this back in to make it a little shorter. But I want to make this into that, that ball without a bunch of dents in it. Because if you use it in some cases, you might see a pattern. It'll maybe uh, take off the uh, graphite off of your paper by just touching it. And that, that I mean, just touching it just like this. That usually it's all you need to do, just come along and you will get sensitive to the amount of pressure you need. And, and then I hold it in my hand like this and I go like this and put it between my finger and my thumb and make my point. It's wonderful. You can renew that point so quickly and so easily and this is quite, uh, you know, uh, you can mold it very easy. It's quite soft and it will harden over a period of time, but then just go ahead and freshen it up and make it brand new again. Look at the difference. This was darker than that one. I picked out the darkest one to do this with. So isn't that incredible? Look at that. It's just like, it's amazing. You'd think that the whole thing would fill up with graphite. No, it doesn't. That graphite evidently is far less uh, of an amount than we might think. And so I can do this again, just to freshen up the point. If I don't have a point that I, I really desire, I can just go ahead and twirl it in my fingers again. The other thing I like to do is I will fold this over 
and then I will pinch it. And in that way, I've made myself a blade. And I can come along and just take a nice streak. I can clean up a, a whisker or a hair or a highlight somewhere in a small space. And you can even use it as your tapered stroke. You glide on and you glide off. So you don't have this bold start to your, to your raced streak. So anyway, just remember, look at, I just had that blade. And I just put it right back to the point. If I want to make the blade, I can go and fold that over and then pinch it. And you have your blade. Now it's good to make it substantial enough that it isn't just going to fold over. You want it to have some stability. And yet you can freshen it up with a few strokes you might find. Oh, it isn't as sharp as it was when I when I started this. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and I'll I'll uh, freshen that up by squeezing it again, or maybe even folding it over and squeezing it again. But see, I still have all this. This is wonderful. This will take off. Let's, let's just do one. Let's do here, this. You can regulate the value that's on your paper. Look at that. That just took it right down to a good starting place. Like when you're doing your sphere and you're using maybe a lid or a template to start your sphere and you end up with a darker line than you thought you might, you just come back in and you tap it off until it's just enough to see. But sometimes there's whole areas on your drawing that you may decide, well, you know what, I think that needs to be a little lighter. And if you want to take it off, I didn't put that on there very hard. I didn't layer like I often do, but let's just see. Oh my. Even with this kneaded eraser, it's gone. And you can see that the, uh, the uh, graphite is on there. And then what you'll do is you'll just go ahead and you'll maybe stretch it if it's too much, but you don't have to worry about it because even this, this dirty old thing, it may be years old, collecting all kinds of stuff. And it can turn out as fresh and brand new as you would want to have it in the store. So now the sizes. Somebody was saying, well, you know, what do you prefer? I prefer the large size. If I had to double up on one, I'd, I'd maybe put one of these with it. Now, this doesn't have a label on it. That's why it's, you know, uh, turned over. <clears throat> but I didn't even realize they made them this small. This is, a, this is a general about half the size of that one. So it's half, half, half. And, uh, and you can add any one of these to this as you want because I, I still like to have this to, in my hand to you know really feel like I have control over it. And I can twirl it in here. I have a couple ladies that like the tiniest little thing and they'll just make a little tiny little, you know. No, I don't like that myself, but it's your preference. You can do whatever you want. And so take advantage of the needed eraser. It is a marvelous, well, I, I tell everybody, when I first started using a needed eraser, I thought I was cheating. Where did this come from? It worked so well for what I wanted to do. And so I hope you can take full advantage of it and learn how to go ahead and recondition it and, uh, and, and you know, make it into the forms you need to make it specific to how you want your, your racing to be. So I hope that helps you and I'll see you next time. This is Daryl Tank with 5 Pencil Method. See you again. Bye-bye.